I'm here at Launchpad 17A with Phoenix Launch Manager Chuck Duvall. Chuck, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Tiffany. It's a pleasure to be here. Chuck, can you tell us what work is going on behind us here? We're to the point of testing the launch vehicle on the pad. We've got the first and second stage mated, and we'll run through a series of electrical and mechanical checks before we do a simulated flight. We'll load the first stage with liquid oxygen, make sure that the tank system is sound and willing to take cryogenic temperatures. It's all in preparation for the spacecraft and its third stage to roll out. Once we roll them out and mate them to uh, the launch vehicle, we'll perform an integrated test, make sure that the launch vehicle and the spacecraft are working well together, and that's all in preparation for countdown. Chuck, I have two questions from our viewers. Timothy from Springfield would like to know, why does the Delta II rocket need so many boosters? It's all about performance. How much does the spacecraft weigh, and where is it going? So in the case of Phoenix, it's a fairly heavy spacecraft and it's going to Mars. So we needed a vehicle that would be able to lift off the ground with, with uh, Phoenix and take it through Earth's gravitational pull and head on to Mars. Kevin from Bowling Green would like to know, what makes the Delta II rocket the right one to carry the Phoenix spacecraft? We look at three things when we're evaluating a mission. We look at cost effectiveness, we look at past performance, and capability of the launch vehicle. Can it lift the mass that we have and take it to the proper orbit? In the case of Phoenix, we looked at that and this particular configuration of the Delta II was a perfect match for Phoenix. Well, thanks Chuck for joining us and good luck on launch day. Thanks, Tiffany. Phoenix Principal Investigator Peter Smith from the University of Arizona has graciously agreed to answer some additional viewer questions about the science of the mission. Here's Peter. My name is Peter Smith. I'm the principal investigator of the next mission to Mars called the Phoenix mission. Phoenix is going to Mars to an Arctic region to investigate a discovery made in 2002 by the Odyssey spacecraft that the Arctic region has ice near the surface surrounding the actual exposed polar cap. In other words, it's sort of a permafrost region on Mars that was only recently discovered and whose properties are totally unknown. So Phoenix is a voyage of exploration and discovery. Putting a spacecraft down on one of the colder parts of Mars is really something that has stressed our engineering team. And so we've had to come up with a well-insulated container to hold our electronics, which only work down to certain temperatures and then we put in heaters to keep those electronics above that temperature at all times. Now, of course, this takes some of our solar power. And as winter comes to the spacecraft and the sun sets, it gets extremely cold, so cold that it actually freezes out the carbon dioxide atmosphere into dry ice. And you'll get a layer of dry ice that actually encases the spacecraft and no solar energy for the heaters. And so, at that point, the Electronics would be stressed past the point where they're guaranteed to work and it'd be a miracle if they survive through that winter. Uh, but we may try and listen in the spring and summer of the next year just to see if it did. I suspect it won't. The robot arm is very strong. If, uh, if you were to brace your legs and hold onto that arm and try and stop it from moving, it would drag you. So it's a strong arm. It may actually even move the spacecraft. Um, so we feel very confident we can get through even very hard packed soils. Now when we get to the very cold ice, if it's a, almost a pure ice, it's the, the hardness almost of granite. And so we put a power tool on the end of the arm that actually acts as a, uh, a rasp and it spins and throws pieces of ice chips inside of the back of our scoop and we can deliver those to our instruments. So we are sure that we'll get a sample of even the hardest materials. NASA developed airbags as part of the Pathfinder mission and decided to use them again for the Mars rovers. However, the spacecraft we've inherited was designed before Pathfinder was successful. Its propulsion system was designed. And so we've gone back to the the landing system of the Vikings, the two Vikings, which is using thrusters. And we feel that we're very safe using thrusters. And in fact, for us to use airbags, we'd have to reduce the mass of our spacecraft. And that would be uh, 
mean less science and less capability. So we're very happy with thrusters. The closest we've ever been to the polar regions with a lander, uh, a successful lander, is Viking 2. And it landed about 45 degrees north latitude. On the Earth, that would be somewhere near Chicago, I think, and, and very far from northern Canada or northern Greenland, which is the latitudes we're going to using an Earth analog. Now, there was an attempt to get to the polar regions in 1999 with Mars Polar Lander. Unfortunately, it failed to land safely. And we are actually reusing some of the instruments that were on that mission. And uh, hopefully, uh, we will have success this time. And that's really the reason for the name Phoenix. Phoenix is a long-lived bird that dies in flames and is reborn from its ashes. So it's a symbol of rebirth. you enjoyed the program, I want to thank our guests for giving us this inside look at what goes into a successful launch mission. Join us live for the Phoenix Liftoff on NASA TV or on your computer at nasa.gov phoenix. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tiffany Nail.